very simply, this was uh, over the winter. Um, it, um, the government made it, I think the article was called the redirection. There was a major change in policy by the United States government, essentially, um, which was that we were going to, the American government would join with the Brits and other Western allies and with what we call the moderate Sunni governments, that is the governments of Jordan, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt, uh, uh, and uh, join with them and with Israel uh, to fight the Shia. One of the major goals for America, of course, was uh, uh, the obsession the Bush White House has with Iran. And the other obsession they have is, of course, is and fear is of Hezbollah. Uh, the party of God that is so dominant in uh, the Shia party of God that's so dominant in southern Lebanon that wants and whose leader Nassan Hasrola uh, wants to play a bigger political role and is doing quite a bit to, to get there and is in direct confrontation with Senora. And so you have a situation where the Sunni government pretty much in control now, the American supported Sunni government um, uh, headed by uh, Fado Senora, who was a deputy or an aide to. Uh, uh, Rafi Kareri, the, the slain leader of uh, Lebanon. Uh, that government has, we know, uh, the International Crisis Group reported a couple of years ago that uh, the son, Saad Harari, the son of uh, Rafi Kareri, who's now a major player in the parliament of, of uh, Lebanon, he put up $40,000 bail to free four um, um, uh, Sunni fundamentalists, jihadists, Salafists, what you will, who were tied directly to, well, we, you know, this word al-Qaeda is sort of ridiculous. They were tied to jihadist groups. And um, uh, God knows that uh, al-Qaeda, in terms of Osama bin Laden, doesn't have much to do with what we're talking about. Uh, these are independently, uh, um, uh, uh, more or less, you could call them fanatical uh, jihadists. And uh, so the goal, of, part of the goal of the problem of, in Lebanon, part of the way this policy played out, was... Uh, with uh, Saudi help, Prince Bandar, if you remember him, uh, we remember Prince Bandar, the Saudi prince, as a major player in Iran-Contra and also in the American effort uh, two decades ago. If you, if you remember, we, we, uh, we, we supported uh, Osama bin Laden and other jihadists in Afghanistan against the Russians. Um, and um, that didn't work out so well. But we went right back to the well again, and we began supporting some of these jihadist groups, and particularly the, in the article I did name uh, Fatah um, al-Islam. Um, the idea was to provide them with some arms and some um, money um, and some basic equipment. So uh, these are small units, a couple hundred people. There were three or four around the country we were given the same help covertly, uh, the goal being they would be potential enemies of uh, Hezbollah in case of warfare, in case uh, Nasrallah decided to do something physical, get kinetic in uh, Lebanon, we, uh, the, uh, the Sunni, the, uh, the Sunni uh, uh, senior government would have some very tough guys on its side, period. That's the policy. Based on uh, w uh, common sense and what I'm reading, the Lebanese army has maintained an amazing sort of neutrality. Uh, which is surprising. Uh, the army has not been a pawn of the senior government. As you know, the American government, the American position right now, there's a standoff politically. And you cannot discuss what's going on without discussing the overall politics. There's a standoff politically right now, a very serious one in, in Lebanon. The government's polarized. The government in power really has no legal basis to make any changes in, uh, in cabinet positions, etc., because it's not a constitutional government, because uh, uh, Hezbollah, which had five members of the parliament, uh, five members of the cabinet and a dozen or so members in the parliament, Hezbollah pulled out um, months ago, and there were street protests, protests against Senor. And right now you have Hezbollah in, in, in league with a, a Christian leader, uh, named um, Aoun, a former uh, chief of staff of the army, Aoun and Nasrullah are in an amazing partnership against the Senora government. And where this breaks down and who's going to win this standoff, it's been going on since last December, is it clear? America totally supports Senora. Uh, but there's a big, brutal fight going. And uh, the Lebanese army stayed out of it um, and was pretty much, um, uh, very much independent in the sense that when there were street demonstrations, they did not beat up on the uh, Nasrallah people. Uh, they were very impartial. So I think the story that we have is that there was a, a crime and they were chasing people into the, one of the Palestinian camps, which are always hotbeds. Um, God knows the Palestinians are the end of the stick uh, for not only for the West, but also for the Arab world. Nobody pays much attention to them and it's uh, those places. I've been to Tripoli and been into the camps, and they are seething. Um, as they should be, you know, rational people um, um, uh, don't like being mistreated. And in any case, um, 
Uh, so what you have is uh, um, what seems to me just a series, uh, the word you could use is unintended consequences. I don't think anybody in the senior government uh, anticipated that the people they were covertly support, supporting to some degree. I got an email the other day, and I have not checked this out, from somebody who was in the community, uh, in the intelligence community, and still consults with the community. He says, why, do, why don't we ask more about the uh, American arms that um, the fighters of Fatah al-Islam have, uh, have are, are brandishing. I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I did get that email. And so uh, that could be true. Um, both Saudi money and American money, not directly but indirectly, was fed into these, into these uh, groups. And what is a laugh riot, and the reason uh, I'm actually talking uh, uh, to you, uh, you guys about this, uh, I usually don't like to do interviews unless I have a story in The New Yorker, the reason I'm talking about it is because the American government keeps on putting out this story that Syria is behind um, uh, the, the uh, Fatah group, which is just beyond belief. There's no way. Um, it may be possible, but the, the chances of it are very slight, simply because Syria is a, a very big supporter, obviously, of Nasrallah. And um, uh, Bashir Assad uh, has told me that he's in awe of Nasrallah, that he, he worships, worships at his feet. Um, and and uh, has great respect for him. The idea that the Syrians would be sponsoring a Sunni jihadist group whose sole mission are to kill the apostates, that is, anybody who doesn't support their view of uh, the Wahhabi or Salafist view of, of uh, Sunni religion, that includes the Shia. Anybody who doesn't believe, support these guys' religions are apostates and are killable. That's basically one of the crazy aspects of all this. And um, it's just inconceivable. Uh, nothing can be ruled out, but that doesn't make much case. And I noticed that in the papers today, uh, there's fewer and fewer references to this. The, the newspapers uh, in America are beginning to wise up that this can't be, this isn't very logical. The White House is putting it out hot and heavy as part of the anti-Syria campaign, but it's not flying because it doesn't make sense. So there we are. It's, it's, uh, it's another mess. You might think that um, one of the reasons, I think I wrote about this in the New Yorker, one of the things that the Saudi of Bandar had promised us was that we can control the jihadists. jihadists. We can control them. They, he assured us, don't worry about getting in bed with these bad guys, because, um, if you remember, the same kind of uh, assurances were given to us in the late 1980s when we supported, as I said, bin Laden and others uh, in the war against Russia, uh, the Mujahideen War. And that, of course, uh, bit us on the ass, and this is too. Anytime you have... Um, a violent anti-Iran policy and, and anti-Shia policy, you have to start looking there. I, I, look, clearly this president uh, is deeply involved in this, uh, too. But, the, but the, 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 what I hear from my people, of course, the players, it's always Cheney, Cheney. Well, Cheney meets with Bush at least once a week. They have a lunch. They usually have a scheduled lunch. And out of that comes a lot of big decisions. We don't know what's ever said at that meeting. And this is uh, talk about not being... Um, uh, uh, op- <laughs> talk about being opaque. <laughs> uh, this this is a government that is so hidden from us. Um, so I, I can't. I, I can tell you that. Uh, you know the, the thing that's amazing about this government. The thing that's really spectacular is even now how they can get their way, mostly with a lot of the American press. For example, I do know, and uh, you know, you have to take it on face value. You, if you've been reading me for a long time, you know a lot of the things I write are true or come out to be more or less true. I do know that within the last month, maybe four, four and a half weeks ago, uh, they made a decision that because of the, uh, the, the totally dwindling support for the war in Iraq, we'd go back to the al-Qaeda card, and we'd start talking about al-Qaeda. And the next thing you know, right after that, Bush went to the Southern Command, this was a month ago, and talked, mentioned al-Qaeda 27 times in a speech. He did so just the other day, this week. Well, al-Qaeda this, al-Qaeda that, all of a sudden... Uh, the poor Iraqi Sunnis, I mean, they can't do anything without al-Qaeda. It's only al-Qaeda that's dropping the bombs and, and uh, causing mayhem. It's not the Sunni and Shia insurgents or militias. And this policy just gets picked up. Although there's uh, absolutely no empirical basis. Most of the pros will tell you the foreign fighters are a couple of percent. And then they're sort of leadership, uh, leaderless in the sense that there's no overall direction of the uh, various foreign fighters. You could call them al-Qaeda. You can also call them jihadists and salafists that want to die um, fighting the Americans or the occupiers in, in Iraq, and they come across the border. There's no attempt to suggest there's any significant coordination of these groups by uh, bin Laden or anybody else. Uh, and uh, and the, uh, the press just goes gaga 
Um, and so they went gaga a little bit over the Syrian connection to the activities in Tripoli. 